the Thoughty OT podcast. And what I'm what, what what I maybe what you need to inform me on is because some advocates don't like me, is what are those advocates wanting out of life? Now, obviously, not to be discriminated at work and things like that, obviously. Yeah. But I think they're kind of what they want's different than than for me. I think it's um I, I, I would agree with you, and that's 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 why I asked a, a question earlier about the, you know, how how autism advocacy has changed, and it seems to be, seems to me, um, that it's a lot about specifics of of language use, um, that is the the gateway, um, <laughs> to people either liking or, or disliking you in the in the autistic community, like, for example. My 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 name on YouTube and my name on Instagram is currently Asperger's Growth. Now, Asper well, I can agree with that because just in my own case, I keep learning more and more. I have had people say to me, "The older I get, the less autistic I I act," <laughs> and that my talks have gotten better as I got older. So that would be Asperger Growth. Yeah, and you know it it makes sense, doesn't it? And and the the message is clear. Um, but a, l a large chunk of the amount of comments or messages or emails that I get, it's about my name. It's about my choice of name rather than what I do, you know, and oh, it's really, it's really depressing sometimes. Really that, that... language based, you see, cause I'm, see, as a, I'm an object visualizer, it, mm -hmm. you see, cause there's, there's three kinds of, um, you know, people on the spectrum There's object visualizers. Yep. There's the pattern, math, and music. <clears throat> and then there are the ones, the history lovers, where they are word-based, so. which I'm definitely not. Mm -hmm. And and so they really get into the exact language. And I'm trying to figure out, okay, what language should I avoid using? What language should I use? What are the rules? Tell me. I'll do it. Well, I, I can send you my, my videos on Autism Language Explained. If you'd like to, why don't you just explain it in a very <laughs> maybe explain me? Give me the elevator speech. Yeah, yeah. Give me the elevator speech right now. Okay. Um, people don't like Aspergers. Um, they're they're moving away from the term Aspie. Now that I knew that because mm. because of the bad background of the doctor that sure. I knew about. Sure. Um, we're also moving away from. Um, we're uh, moving more towards neurodiversity related language. So uh, neurodivergent is the name that people that that people have given to people who are neurodiverse. So like well, and I and I can and I I understand that because you get autism in the well fully verbal forms. It is a, it would just be a personality variant. Mm. Uh, that that I can. I can go along with that. I'll use those terms. Uh, now, one thing I got bashed about was uh, using high and low functioning. Yeah. Now, I can't change old stuff as in older books. Mm -hmm. But now, I in everything new, I'm calling it, okay, once I get past age six or something like that, fully verbal, partially verbal, nonverbal. Yeah. Uh, that Those are the words I'm using now. But yeah. I can't do anything about the older publications. You can't go so back and change a book no exactly um but i now sometimes i still got some stuff where i have to use those terms and um, because if i don't use them then the people don't understand what i'm talking about <laughs> exactly. so i'll say exactly. well talk about asperger's i'll just say um they don't use that term anymore but that's um socially awkward no speech delay yeah <laughs> in a, in a nutshell for for sort of explaining what autism is to to other people it's you know, even to explaining to other people, but also in medical settings, in social care settings, in teaching, you know, some it's important to have to have some kind of language that distinguishes people, um, not because we want to uh, hate on a certain group or we want to be more superior or, you know, that that's the kind of stuff that people say, but to actually explain what explain what groups of people we're talking about, um, 
and I, I don't use high functioning and low functioning. Well, I'm, I, I have stopped using it. I'm calling it no, mm. uh, fully verbal, partially verbal, nonverbal. And what I'm That's talking about, idea. auditory language coming out of the person's mouth. That's how it, I would find. Uh, but what I find those crazy. are the terms I'm using now. Uh, and then also on my talks, making it very clear about some of the nonverbals that can't control their movements. They look really severe. Uh, the books written by people who type independently. Sure. And when I do a full autism talk, that's in all my slideshows. I make sure. sure people know about those books. And the, the crazy, the crazy thing is about about this whole thing is that people are people would be a lot more likely to accept what what you say if you say it in those terms if you use that language. But you're basically saying the same thing. Well, it's that's just... right. It is. It is the same thing. I mean, it and it, it, and there's a lot of other controversial stuff, you know, where you're changing some of the language. And I can think of words I said I'm not going to repeat because they're too controversial. That you know, I said as a young child that sure. everybody did. I didn't sure. Sure. even think that it was wrong. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know. But the thing that that um, I I want to see, I'm finding the people on the spectrum that are happiest have got jobs they really like. Yeah. So one of my big things is um, helping adults make the transition to work. And I one see. of the big problems I'm seeing is this kid's so overprotected. He's never gone in a store and bought something by himself. <laughs> and he's fully verbal. Like, you got to be kidding. So I have to talk about shopping. Yeah. But it, it's, um, I also think about, and I've done a lot of stuff about identity, is when you look at a lot of, last names of people they are jobs smith yeah. baker minor yeah. mason these are jobs so what that tells me is that a lot of people's idea of um their identity was um, tied up in their work because their last names are names of jobs that's really interesting and and he really all i can say about the english language well i've done it in any other language no, other sure. than english and so what I'm thinking is, for me, my sense of identity is not, the autism is important as to who I am, but it's secondary to sure. a scientist, designer, inventor, sure. and you, animal you, behavior you have your own. You have the, the own right to choose that, whether you want to say, for example, uh, what kind of language you want to use, whether you want to use person first or identity first language. I think it should be something that the individual chooses. Um, well, I would agree with that. You see, one in my very earliest publications, okay, and here this book came out 10 years ago. I call it The Autistic Brain. Yeah. And I didn't even that. think about <laughs> what kind of language it was. Then I had educators. It was educators who were pushing person first. You should say person with autism. So I started doing that. <laughs> and then I found out the activists want identity first. So then I put autistic in there. Then I get questions from educators. <laughs> <laughs> Why aren't you using person first? And then I just explain that a lot of activists don't like person first. Yeah. I yeah. just explain it. So sometimes I use a mixture because in writing, it's not good to just keep saying something the same way all the time. 